Hello everyone, my name is Exabu and welcome to part 2 of my coverage of Unity of Command 2's original campaign. Today we are going to cover the entirety of the third conference, both the Northern Europe and Mediterranean theatres and both the historic and alternative history scenarios, including the absolute doozy of 4th Casino which you have to fail hard to get to and which I'd never seen in my life prior to making this video, whose theme today is going to be don't be stingy with upgrading your HQs. Unlike say Moscow 41, many of the HQs you get, especially those in Mediterranean, are going to stay with you for the entire campaign and remember that we don't buy cards, and yes, I don't buy cards during conferences. Specialist steps come and go, but all of those HQ abilities and additional command points and improvements, they all stay and you should invest in them. Which actually is what makes the initial landing in the Overlord mission so difficult, because you're introduced to so many new HQs which aren't experienced, don't have many command points, their abilities aren't upgraded, and you'll have to steer around all of those deficiencies. Also, I think I didn't mention that in the previous video, unlike the Germans, unlike the Soviets, well, if you haven't noticed, most of the Allied units take three specialist steps, and specialist step management is critical here. Go for certain combinations, like, as I always mention them, engineers plus special forces, or special forces that cross rivers, they can be a complete game changer and obviously don't shy away from giving your units two artillery pieces. The artillery bonus in combat is capped at five, however two priests give you four, and two 25 pounders give you six, which is still an improvement. Okay, you lose one point, but that doesn't matter. Sometimes this arrangement works and is really powerful. Also, don't forget about my second channel, Slothaboma Couch Buttock. I'm posting full playthroughs of these missions there, including, paired with this specific video, is the rush for the Apennines mission, which was kind of difficult, certainly the most difficult mission in this video, and that playthrough will actually not involve the use of any cards. In my explanations, I will talk about the possible use of a card, and it's not a terrible idea, but it's not required. Alright, let's go to the missions and the doodles. I'm betting the 4th Casino is one of the least played missions in Unity of Command 2 because you really have to try and fail hard to get to it. Which requires not getting Monte Casino and Rome in the previous mission, Monte Cassino, which is kind of this nicer twin of this mission. And if you do have trouble dealing with Monte Cassino proper, please look at my guide, ask questions in the comments, but get that mission right, because in a sadistic twist of irony, Fourth Casino is even harder. So whoever is playing it, you're probably going for the completely historical playthrough of the campaign, which Fourth Casino is actually a part of. And my biggest piece of advice for you is prepare in advance. Get those HQs prepared in all of the previous missions and don't be stingy with your prestige during level ups. In my playthrough, both the HQs had 9 command points and could throw 4 faint attacks or 4 set piece attacks a turn each. It's also a good idea, as always, to be rather careful about your troops in the previous missions, so that the frontal forces in 4th Casino are well equipped, especially with engineers and special forces, and if they aren't, give them as much as they can, and this leads me to the first and probably the most annoying objective of this entire really small mission. Montemayo is a very good example of the puzzliness that Unity of Command series is sometimes criticized for, and here's a way to deal with it in maybe 70% of all cases. First, look at the equipment of the division in Casino and the hex below it, and then use those Indians in Casino to set-piece attack Montemayo, reducing their fortification level and hopefully suppressing them a little. There's actually a 30% chance of hitting jackpots and forcing this unit to retreat, which it has nowhere to, and it will be cornered, making this whole enterprise much easier. If it isn't, use air support on it. You should get one or two suppression out of it. This is the most random bit in this whole 
Gambit, and doing that set piece attack first increases your chances of a good outcome. Then clear the hex below Montemayo. Suppressive fire the heck out of them and destroy that unit or force it to retreat. Anything to leave some space for those Montemayo defenders to retreat to. At this point, an attack on Montemayo should be at 70-80% probability of retreat. So go ahead, attack, force them to retreat, take that hex. If not, Restart the mission. This whole dance is necessary because it's only that French division below Casino that can actually enter the Montemayo Hex on turn 1 and it must still have movement points, so no set-piece attacks. Alright, once Montemayo is yours, you shouldn't have too much trouble dealing with the rest. Start blasting Monte Casino with set-piece attacks on turn 1, just to reduce or ideally remove all of their fortifications. The AI doesn't restore those fortifications for whatever reason, and on turn 2, you shouldn't have too much trouble pushing some more set-piece attacks and kicking those power troopers out of Monte Cassino or destroying them outright. And once Monte Cassino is yours, you really don't need to move past it and just like in the original Monte Cassino mission, most of the maneuverable action here happens along the coast. So push all of your tanks there, send both of your HQs there, make sure obviously that the supply is fine. It should be, this map is very small. I'd advise some caution around the Ansio bridgehead. At the beginning of the mission, obviously look at that counter-attacking mechanized division, but even barring that, be careful not to rush to roam with your infantry. This is open to Rain and the German mechanized and tank divisions will have a day killing your infantry divisions there. So maintain your bridgehead, maybe clear some of the infantry around it, and wait for the tanks to arrive. It may be a good idea to cross the river east of the Route 6 objective, just so that taking it is not that difficult, and once your tanks are there, advancing to and encircling Rome isn't gonna be too much of a problem by turn 6. Unlike its alternative history, Evil Twin, roads from Rome isn't that difficult. The weather is great, you're prepared for combat, and the Germans are wrangling for retreats. And this is where my first tip comes. Look at the map and note that most of the troops that are facing you at the beginning of the mission have a rearguard token, meaning that they will retreat no matter how you attack. So make sure you don't waste the valuable time of your tank division on all of these people. Pinch them with your infantry a little and then rush your tanks into the openings. That's pretty much how you're supposed to take both uh, Civitavec Chia and Viterbo. On turn one, that German power trooper division is pretty much the only real obstacle there. But you're coming in force and that shouldn't be too much of a problem. From there on, it all devolves into a bridge hopping game. Jumping from one river to another and holding those critical bridge hexes, especially those leading to Grosseto, because although it doesn't look the thing, it is the most difficult objective of the mission, and I highly recommend you to send two strong tank divisions in there, not just because of their firepower, but also because of their speed so that you can take the bridges intact and prevent the AI HQs from slowing you down on the road there. Once Grosseto is yours, Livorno and Arezzo aren't gonna be too much of a problem. You've got the entire mission to take them and just clear the railways leading to them and take those towns. It's virtually the same story in the east except that the bridges are blown and your progress will be a bit slower, but make sure you bring a couple of tanks, some engineers, and neither Pesaro nor Ancona will cause you trouble. And welcome to the evil twin of roads from Rome, the rush for the Apennines. Oh, oh, it's winter. Oh, oh, some of the bridges are blown. Oh, oh, this mission is gonna kick your butt. If you're playing the alternative history branch of the campaign, this probably is gonna be the first head scratcher you encounter, and mostly unfortunately because of the objectives at the end of the mission. But first, things first. Even though the deadlines for taking Viterbo and Civita Vecchia 
care are slightly laxer than roads from Rome, two turns, you can take both on turn one. Use air support on Viterbo, get your best special forces Brit division in, then kick those Germans out, take the town, get the B-26 air support card, use it, and then drop the bombs on Civitavecchia and then send your elite infantry there and kick the Germans out of there as well. The rest of your troops should push forward in all the openings that there are. There is no rear guard nonsense this time. Just don't forget to repair the bridge in front of Pescara and attack the Germans holding the first town after it. There is a good chance of forcing them to retreat, which will enable you to repair that second bridge immediately and push much Faster there. Send a couple of divisions along the railway leading from Civitavecchia to Livorno. This part of the operation is not that urgent. Eventually these divisions will come to Livorno and they are well capable of taking the town on their own in addition to probably distracting some German divisions in that general area. While there probably will be some resistance in the center where the German supply hubs are, your tanks will quickly overcome them especially since you're getting reinforcements around Rome on turn 2 and your goal is to quickly rush Arezzo. Even if you don't yet control that entire railway it's still a good idea to block the enemy supply and to prevent the Germans from beefing up Arezzo, which sometimes they do with mission ends in consequences. Ultimately you need to bring two or three strong infantry division to Arezzo to take it comfortably and you'll soon need them further down the road. Also send a couple of units to approach the Route 76 objective. Even though it's in the mountains it's not too easy to take but you shouldn't rush it. If you can use set piece attacks, feint attacks and just normal attacks to kick the defenders out or maybe destroy them, do so but don't don't take the objective yet because one, the empty objective will become a priority for the AI and a magnet for its reinforcements, and two, will engage in some card-related trickery very soon. Now let's look at what the British side of the peninsula holds for us. And this is actually a tricky place. One, I highly recommend you to clear that railway right off the bat, so that you're not stuck with that supply hub right at the beginning at Pescara. You don't have a railway source of supply there yet. And two, as of all of the reinforcements you're getting around Rome on turn 2, you should send a strong tank division to Pescara and to the British side of things. Because while your initial advance there will be very infantry-like and slow because of all of the blown bridges, a little bit later your tanks will get lots of work rushing past Ancona. It's a pretty flat area then having three tank divisions there instead of just two always creates additional options and is a good idea. Especially since in the West you're not gonna need that many tanks to begin with and because of the weather you will not be able to relocate them directly through the Apennines. So plan in advance. It's very easy to encircle Ancona and just rush past it but just don't forget, just remember that two infantry divisions that you are very likely to have left there are quite often not enough to take the defenders out. They will get cornered and you'll just have to destroy them anyway. Finally, don't get too distracted by any kind of reinforcements the Germans send to Route 76. Obviously, keep your flanks tight but don't send any of the troops into the mountains themselves. They'll get mired there and all that for enemy units that will run out of supply soon enough anyway. By this point, your situation in the western parts of the peninsula is going to be very good. Arezzo will be yours, virtually all of the defenders will have been cleared, and you'll have nasty attackers poised to attack Livorno. Congratulations, the nasty part of the mission is about to start. The Germans will get lots of reinforcements later in the mission and be very well prepared to defend both the breach central Apennines and Rimini objectives, and it's very, very hard to take them both. So one thing you can do is, whatever good infantry you have around Arezzo, send it through the mountains to take that breach central Apennines objective. Set up a supply hub nearby and remember that the objective will probably be held by a pretty strong tank division. And although thankfully it's a plane hex so air support will not be terrible at doing their jobs, make sure that the infantry you bring there has special forces, has engineers, something that is useful. Also, it's not that obvious but I've found that pushing from Firenze 
Lisa, in addition to sending troops straight towards the bridge central Apennines, is not a terrible idea. It often leads you to having a third division like touching that specific victory hex. The next thing you can do is actually take Route 76, which you need to do anyway. But remember, Route 76 gives you a paratrooper division card, which means that we can use that naval landing card we got in Palermo at Husky. So it's actually not a terrible idea to stage a landing around Ravenna. It's almost certainly suicidal for that unit and, well, you are replacing that card anyway. This has every chance of becoming a huge distraction for the Germans. And if Ravenna is empty, as it sometimes is, you can actually block the supply of both Rimini and Breach Central Apennines. And you're ending up with a paratrooper card, which is objectively better. Well, now that we have all these shenanigans in play, it's time to push towards Rimini. You'll see this front very quickly turning into a infantry front again, and you should send your best infantry and maybe elite tanks to blast the area around Rimini proper and ultimately take it. This is where not fighting for Route 76 from the east comes into play. Don't divert your resources there. It's actually also possible and advisable to send a couple of American infantry divisions from the west across the mountains that they might prove invaluable in your attacks. Plus, the AI loves trying to kick you out of that bridgehead right next to Rimini, and it can replace a well-fortified unit there with a non-fortified tank. Use this to your advantage, and, well, good luck, you'll need it here. If you've been looking for one, Road from Rimini is a Perfect, perfect example of a bridge hopping mission. Whenever you get delayed crossing these rivers, bridging will get blown and you will encounter heavily fortified infantry on the other bank. So if you see stuff like that happening, it means you're a bit too late and you're not following the rhythm of the mission. Always, and I say always, exploit opportunities to get to bridges and prevent them from getting blown up by the AI. This is especially true for all bridges past Venezia. If you get completely blocked at either of the two rivers between Udine and Venezia, you're probably not gonna be able to finish the entirety of this mission in time. Also, it's very likely that past Venezia, your tanks will rush forward and will have to operate race on their own without the support of the infantry divisions, which means that it's a very good idea to equip your tank divisions, of which you have five, with special forces and engineer specialist steps. Artillery never hurts either. All of this will help negate the fortification bonuses of the defending enemies and assist in handling some of the river crossing attacks that you might engage in. And speaking of river crossings, the game strongly suggests that you get uh, the British 8th Army HQ, the level 3 engineering capability allowing you to do assault crossings and river crossing operations, and I must say that although it can be useful, its application is rather marginal, and you'll probably use those abilities if you've screwed something up and need to correct your mistake. What's far more valuable and critical and essential to this mission is having the pontoon bridge building ability ideally upgraded so that it costs only one command point. You'll use this ability all the time and you'll start using it as soon as you deal with Bologna and face the first and most important German strong points past it. The obvious and the most efficient way of dealing with it is setting up bridges just west of it, bypassing it near Verona and then pushing your tanks towards Venezia and their bridges behind it. I usually send American and French infantry divisions to follow those tanks into the breach and take Verona and exploit this breakthrough. The task of the British troops is slightly more intricate as they will have to build all of those bridges east of the strong points, trying to outflank all of those nasty Jäger and Fallschirmjäger divisions. 
try to cut off the supply of the strong point as quickly as possible because if you don't, you will have significant problems with supply in the eastern parts of the map. So repair those bridges, assault those defenders and push past Venezia. Make sure that all of your tanks are rushing towards Udina and past it. Remember that Paula needs to be taken on turn 9 and if you're decisive and aggressive enough, you can get to Trieste on turn 8, take it, as you can see it's not defended too well, and then rush to Pola, don't worry about any combat there, I've never seen that objective defended by the AI. Using a naval or airborne landing card on Pola is an alternative and a decent way of dealing with that objective, but it's really not something you have to do. Anyway, once Trieste and Pola are yours, crush the defenders out of Udina, you're probably gonna get some help from the approaching infantry, already, while the bulk of your infantry, well, as many as you can squeeze through the mountains, are approaching Trenso. This is a place where you need to get rather loss tolerance. And don't forget that all of these British, Indian and Polish divisions, you're not gonna see them ever again in this campaign. So taking a bunch of losses is fine, obviously as usual, engineer and special forces steps are gonna be decisive in breaking through those mountains and ultimately destroying the defenders of Trento which, as you can see, are not highly experienced. They're just regular infantry division and will not pose too much of a challenge once you break through those highly experienced elite mountaineer German divisions. Without any doubt, Overlords is the most epic of the missions we have seen so far. And thankfully, unlike the other landings, it's relatively easy. First and foremost, we're giving crap loads of firepower and a whopping eight naval barrages. And let me tell you, you may use six of them without any thoughts. Blast all of those coastal defenders, blast Cherbourg, do whatever you want, just leave two barrages for Barneville. And once again, unlike Husky, the initial placements for your troops and for your power troopers are pretty obvious. The British power troopers go to Pegasus Bridge and the Americans go and take Canton and drop next to Cherbourg. Feel free to attack there immediately, use some support. Whoever the AI brings for the next turn is going to be weaker and on turn two you'll have Cherbourg in your hands. Remember that it's a port, meaning that your power trooper division will not run out of supply there. Also, don't discount the usefulness of that little ranger battalion there. It can pack a reasonable punch, and I've found that the AI units don't particularly like attacking it. So ultimately leaving that battalion in that little town between Canton and Bayou, it might be a good idea to prevent the Germans from moving around this area too easily. All right, for what happens next, my biggest piece of advice is stick to your objectives. It is kind of obvious, but at the same time, the map is so much bigger and it's very tempting to push past Carpicare Airfield or go south, southwest of Carantan. You really don't need to do that. Wait for the next mission, you'll get plenty of that there. But you obviously is not going to be well defended, it's not going to cause you any trouble, but Barneville might, especially if you spread your forces around, once again, don't push south of Carantan. Your American push there, and it should consist of maybe three or four infantry division and maybe a tank division, and its immediate objective is to connect with the paratroopers in Cherbourg, and then push towards Barneville and use your naval barrages there. Five turns is more than enough if you do it that way. Be aware that the Germans have crap loads of tanks in the area between saint Lo and Caen. The tanks are pretty powerful and on hard they are a challenge even for your own tanks, let alone your infantry out in the open. So don't push past the airfield, maybe take that bridge just west of it, this will severely hamper the German counterattacks in the area, and then bide your time. Arrange your best infantry divisions around Khan, and then just bombard us into oblivion. The AI is very likely to actually remove the initial defenders and move, say, a tank division in there. Especially if you try to push through Pegasus Bridge, the AI loves to counterattack there, so you might sustain some losses, but at the same time, sometimes it means also that the defenders of Khan 
Vermont will be reshuffled and you'll have an easier time actually taking that town. With St. Law, it's a bit more of a supply nightmare to be honest. And although my advice still stands, don't rush it, try and encircle it from the east, don't cross that river. You might need to take some losses there because your HQs at this point are really crappy and simply will not be able to deliver the amounts of faint attacks and set piece attacks that you will need at St. Law. So I accept the battle prediction of 1 to 1 as okay, and with enough force concentration you will be able to squeeze the mass of their two turns. Look at this map. Look at this map in despair, because obviously Battle of the Bagage is going to be about killing this insane horde of German tanks. This is one of the missions where you will feel the bites of playing on hard, because your seemingly invincible tank force will not seem as invincible anymore. The AI will be very happy to move all these tanks around the map, and counterattacking where you least expect it, in particular at St. Law and Kapike Airfield, which we're supposed to take on turn one anyway. In both these cases, we need to properly defend these hexes to prevent the AI from either attacking them altogether or not being able to push through. And this is where Moscow 41 Eastern Front experience actually helped me. I'm getting those Majaisk flashbacks again. Anyway, the recipe is kick the Germans out of the surrounding hexes and hold those hexes as well. For St. Law, use your saturation strike on German forces south of it. And as I said, kick those Germans out and hold those hexes with your tanks. In later turns, you should push even further up to that little town and the bridge leading west. This will be your best access point to the southwest of the map, to blocking the supply lines to the German forces at Coutances, and to ultimately taking the breakout objective. Holding that bridge and preventing the Germans from shuffling their tanks about is also a good bonus. Because this place is so central to succeeding in this mission, I recommend you to send a British tank division and a British infantry division to reinforce this area. Okay, now let's look at Kapike Airfield. So kick that panther out and kick out the tank division west of it. That hex has an important bridge that the Germans will use if you don't cover it. If both these hexes are yours, they will not counterattack the airfield and you can advance further. Which, well, means that you should use that bridge and push your tanks southwards and block the supply lines of the defenders of Lier Bacage and all of the surrounding German troops. You will not be able to provide your tanks with any secure supply lines, so use your HQ abilities and German supply hubs to feed this whole enterprise, but remember that the ultimate goal here is the destroying German tanks and potentially moving west to help out with the breakouts. Obviously, Villiers-Bacage should fall pretty quickly. It's not a difficult objective if you have infantry equipped with artillery, engineers, special forces, the usual thing. Also, never miss an opportunity to cause damage, suppress any German units because your HQs are still in their infancy. All right, let's look at the Lycée and Coutances parts of the map. It's very likely that most of your troops in this area will not be experienced fighting against really experienced Germans, so I advise you not to push too hard. Your hopefully elite 82nd Airborne Division should gradually push towards Lesser, and you should obviously take any opportunity to strike hard at the Germans, but otherwise you should wait for the supply lines leading to Coutances to be cut, and then just mopping up their defenders. By the way, Lesser gives you an Avro Lancaster card, which I didn't take, and Villiers-Bacage gives you a Churchill. Also, leave your naval barrage for the breakout objective. It's normally empty, but by the end of the mission, it's very likely that you'll encounter something motorized in there, and a good three to four steps of suppression will not hurt. Normandy Breakout is the last mission of the little Normandy invasion epic in the third conference of the campaign. You're finally getting more and more troops and the Germans are on their last legs, at least in France. And even though they still have plenty of elite 
tank formations. They are mostly nothing compared to the Battle of the Kaj, and supply is going to become an increasing problem that you have to keep in mind. Nevertheless, the task for most of your troops on turn 1 and 2, except maybe the 3rd American Army or parts of it, is to kill as many German tanks as possible because those are the only troops that can screw over your mission here. In particular, they can block your only supply line leading into the west, which is that Cherbourg railway. Yep. Oh, the horror, there's no direct railway connection between Cherbourg and Rennes. And you'll have to deal with it, and the first step towards that is going to be a breakthrough south of Caen. Try and inflict as much damage as you can on those Panthers guarding the front, and actually break out. If you reach the hex north of Le Mans with those two railway bridges by the end of turn two, you are doing really well. But even anything close to it will be very good because you will block the ability of the AI to shift its forces left and right, and you'll pretty much cut the supply off all of those troops west of the railway. Be careful though, the Germans might and probably will counterattack leave open spaces for your tanks to retreat to, and conversely, don't leave any open spaces for the Germans to get into and cut your railway line, and you might actually use the Canadian or British HQs to do that. Remember that HQs take three movement points to get into, so sometimes they can effectively work as screens for your front line. The second breakthrough will be through Avranche, and Patton's third army will have to be split in two. Most of the troops, including all of the infantry, have to push west and southwest towards Saint-Nazaire and Brest. Do everything to prevent the AI from blowing those bridges on your way. Actually, Rennes is a pretty decent initial position for Patton's HQ. Using a couple of Third Army's tank divisions to clear the railway line between Rennes and Le Mans is also a decent idea because those are the only forces you'll get quickly into that area. But make sure you send enough forces to Saint-Nazaire and Brest at the same time because all of those Western objectives can be rather difficult to take and it's best to be prepared there. You know what, let's talk about them right now. Number one, as I said, push in both directions, Saint-Nazaire and Brest, at the same time. Don't worry about the defenders of Saint-Malo, that division is absolutely static, the AI is not gonna use it to attack anywhere. Try to take Saint-Nazaire as quickly as possible, make sure that you're sending some infantry with the attack, use the motorized ability of the HQ, because as you can see, all three of the objectives there are protected by pretty strong infantry units with full fortification, so you will really need that set-piece attack support. Senazer is critical because it's the closest objective and if you take it early you will have more time to deal with the rest. And that 10% boost to supply efficiency is huge. So rush it, rely on emergency supply ability and take that objective. Obviously if necessary clear the area if you see any kind of Germans trying to counterattack you there. It's not going to be anything serious but I've seen it happen. At the time Senazer becomes yours you should already have a railway connection from Cherbourg and supply will not be that big of a problem, so push towards Lorient. As the two infantry divisions that sit next to Rang, at the beginning of the mission, they should push towards Brest. If well equipped, they are pretty powerful and should be enough to take the objective on their own. As you advance in Bretagne, in the western part of the map, push 3rd Army HQ along with them and don't worry too much about losses because you're not gonna come in force there and you might need to push through. Especially as those bloody cities turn to ruins. Right, in the east we left off at Le Mans and if we successfully managed to split the German front line into and reach Le Mans by turn 3 and take it on turn 3 or 4, the east of the map is going to stay empty, i.e. Chateau, the Paris suburbs objective, aren't going to be defended, you'll just send your tanks in there and be done with them. There will be a bit of a German push from Lizer, as you can see they have some infantry divisions there, but if your tank divisions are strong enough, and they should be, it's not going to be too much of a problem, and the entire mission at this point will turn into a mop operation for all the pockets. Lazer itself isn't such a difficult objective, but decide on which of your HQs you're going to give the level up to. And obviously all of the remaining Germans are this huge experience farm for you, both of your troops and your HQs.
And thanks for checking this one out. The next episode of this huge saga is going to be about Conference 4. And let me just remind you to go to my Twitch account because now I am actually playing all of these missions through and failing and getting to the optimum solution live online on Twitch. So check out my Twitch account link in the description. Obviously subscribe and like this thing. Uh, cheers.